Hello and welcome to Instablogs Global Report. This is Sukhmani with fresh updates and more citizen voices from all over the world. Stories for the day are International community strongly condemns the peace deal between Taliban and Pakistan government. Hit by global recession, Kenyan economic growth to fall to 3% in the year 2009. And student activists call for reduction in transportation fee in Jordan. The international community has expressed its concern to the Pakistan government, citing that the deal allowing Sharia law in the volatile Swat Valley amounted to a possible capitulation to Taliban militants. CJ Kramuddin Behram is worried by what he believes is a parallel system of governance that could embolden the Taliban in the region. This is Akramuddin Bahram from Kabul on Mr.Blogs.com. The peace deal in Rustav Swad Valley has apparently been welcomed by all political forces in Pakistan. However, to analysts, this deal by all practical purposes is an acceptance of parallel system of governance in an independent state. For example, how could a citizen of the country get one kind of justice in one part of the country and another sort of justice in other parts of the country? In addition, this deal has poised serious concerns in the international community and particularly in the region. No country has welcomed the move but have rather criticized Pakistani government for its dual policies in the war on terror. Fear has gripped the region that such deals could simply pave the way for future such violence that could lead to acceptance of demands by force. In fact, the neighboring countries that have been victims of terrorism are much worried, terming the truce equivalent to providing a safe and legal haven to terrorists within Pakistani territories. Economic recession combined with last year's election violence has left Kenya struggling with slowdown. The country's economy is expected to expand by just 2% in 2009, down from 7% in 2007. CEO Rose Wangiwi has more on the cautious optimism being practiced by the leading CEOs of the country. This is Rose Wangoi, a citizen journalist from Kenya, reporting on Instablogs. Market experts and economists are struggling to explain the current situation in Kenya with no clear indication if the current slowdown in the local economy is being caused by the global financial crisis in Western economies or whether it's a conspiracy of local factors. Most companies listed at the Nairobi Stock Exchange are showing a trend of healthy earnings, even as most sectors of the economy complain of disappearing business and facing the prospect of laying off and reducing production. Most CEOs are cautiously optimistic about the future, while leading economic indicators such as inflation, growth rate, stock market index show an economy struggling to find its footing. Very few corporates noticed it at the time, but now it's apparent that even the lowest cadre of staff in most companies are feeling something is not right. The Petra University administration is considering revision of transportation fees as student activists demand reduction in accordance with recent drop in diesel prices. CJ Wad Abuzurek has more on the story from Jordan. This is Wad Abuzurek reporting for the Instablogs from Jordan. Fuel prices in the kingdom are being amended on a monthly basis according to price changes on the international market. However, the Islamic Action Front has criticized the pricing policy, saying that the prices are still higher than those of the international market, while a government official said that those accusations are baseless. Moreover, student activists have been complaining about transportation fees in most of the country's private universities, which are not being changed according to Jordanian amended prices, knowing that last Thursday, the government adjusted the prices of oil derivatives for the tenth time. If you want your voice to be heard by millions, let Instablogs be your choice. You can contact us at cj at instablogs.com. That's all for today's show. We'll be back with fresh updates and more citizen voices. Till then, it's goodbye from the entire team of Homo Report.